Hello and welcome to the Open Heat Transfer Course Conduction. This course is brought to you by RWTH Aachen University and the University of Twente. My name is Wilko Rolfs and in this video we will tackle the problem heat conduction in a multi-layer plane together with convective heat transfer resistances. What are the learning goals in this video? So first of all we will look at a house wall where we add additional thermal resistances due to the convection taking place from the inside to the wall and from the wall to the outside. And then in the next step we will see how to calculate values for the heat transfer rate by accounting for the thermal resistances due to convection. So first of all we will look here and compare the heat losses through a window with and without convective thermal resistances. We assume some values. So we are looking at the heat transfer rate Q dot double dash. So the area specific heat transfer. And we of course have an indoor and an outdoor temperature. We assume this in the winter time to have an indoor temperature of 20 degree and an outdoor temperature of minus 20 degree. The glass thickness is 4 millimeter and the thermal conductivity of glass is 0 0.8 watt per meter Kelvin. So a single glass which we usually do not have anymore in our houses. So let's calculate heat loss without convective resistances. The thermal resistance in this case is the thickness delta glass divided by the thermal conductivity lambda glass and this results in a value of 0 0.005 Kelvin per watt. What does this relate to? We see if we introduce our temperatures, indoor and outdoor temperatures in the Fourier law, we see that we have a heat loss of 8000 watt per square meter. This is an incredible high value. Let's think about a window that has a, thick, uh, a size of only one square meter, we come up with 8 kilowatt of heat loss through this window. This is not what we would have expected because this cannot work together with the size of our um, boiler at home, which has a typically maybe 25 kilowatt for heating the house and so we would lose through two or three square meter of window size the entire heat generated by this one boiler. There is something wrong and the part that is wrong is that we still don't account for the convection in the room and the convection outside. So now let's look at heat loss with convection and how we can calculate that. So for that, I would like to increase the complexity of the example a little bit and look at the three layer wall that we have already taken into account in our prior lectures. So we have these three layers um, an indoor temperature TA here. Let's assume this temperature is directly at the wall an outer temperature TB also directly at the wall and three different layers lambda 2 and the insulation layer is very low the other ones are higher so the temperature profile might look like this you can see the straight lines so the assumptions behind us are of course that we have a steady state and there are no heat sources involved so we have a low temperature gradient here where the thermal conductivity is relatively high but here in the insulation layer thermal conductivity is low so there is a higher temperature gradient and the stone wall on the outside has also a little bit higher thermal conductivity than the insulation. Now what happens if we don't assume that TA and TB are the surface temperatures of the wall? Now TA is the room temperature, TB is the temperature of the surrounding air and there is a connection between the room temperature and the temperature on the surface via the heat transfer coefficient alpha. 
and vice versa on the other side via the heat transfer coefficient better. So this now, let's see, is an empirical coefficient that describes the heat transferred from the inside to the wall depending on the temperature difference between the wall temperature and the room temperature. Now, we do that, we bring Ta from the directly from the wall towards the center, so in the room, and we bring Tb from the wall towards the environment. Now there are a few more assumptions. We already discussed that the lambda um, 2 is insulation with a very low conductivity. And of course, we need later on also values for the heat transfer coefficient indoor and outdoor. But let's first have a look on the temperature profile. So because we move these temperatures, there is a temperature drop between Ta now and the wall temperature. And so this will be shown here. Now we see again our very characteristic temperature profile for convection because here close at the, at the wall we have a high gradient because the liquid movement or air movement is much lower compared to the center of the room. So the convective um, thermal um, characterization or temperature profile is always in a sense that far away from the wall the temperature profile becomes lower or nearly horizontal because there is a lot of movement involved and close to the wall the temperature profile increases or temperature gradient. Now looking at the values the thermal conductivity of gases is much lower than the thermal conductivity of um, solids so the Thermal conductivity here is higher than in the air, and that's also represented by the steeper gradient here compared to the gradient in the wall later on. The same applies, of course, also to the outer side, where we have now a connection between the wall temperature, our former temperature Tb, and the new temperature Tb far away from the wall. These are now two additional resistances that lead to two additional temperature drops between the temperature Ta and the temperature Tb already before entering the wall and the solid body. Now we can use the new positions here, the new temperatures, to draw the temperature profile again inside the wall. And what we see is that, of course, the temperatures are, the temperature gradient is reduced and as such also the temperature gradients inside the wall in the different layers is reduced. A reduced temperature gradient translates directly to a reduced heat transfer through the wall. So of course these two new resistances reduce the heat that is transferred. Now we can use the same assumptions as we did already for the multi-layer wall. So there we assumed that the heat that enters the wall on the one side will also leave the wall on the other side. So the thermal heat conduction is constant. And we can assume this also for the next case here. So the heat conduction Q dot in the, or the heat here convectively transported indoor is equal to the heat transported through the wall by conduction and is also equal to the convective heat transport outside. The assumptions, we are still working in one dimensional case. We have constant material properties and of course here also constant cross-sectional area. Now, how can we now develop an equation for that? Let us first look at what we already know and this is here the heat conduction inside the wall. So we can create or develop an equation based on Fourier's law for each of the compartments Q um, conduction 1, 2 and 3 and in addition here on the other side we can do it in a very similar manner. So temperature difference by the resistance and here the resistance is delta divided by lambda and A in the next part here or in the convective part we don't have delta divided by lambda we only have the heat transfer coefficient which directly connects 
if we would transfer this here on the top, it's our classical equation q dot convective is equal to a heat transfer coefficient times the area times the temperature difference. So we only wrote it in the other way to name this to be a resistance similar to the thermal resistances here for conduction. Now, we still stick to the equation that the heat flux is constant through the entire problem. So from Ta till Tb, we have a constant heat flux and then we can relate this to the single temperature differences. Let's go to this next part here. So we have defined our resistances, which are here, as you can see, the delta divided by lambda A, and for the convection part is one divided by alpha A times the area. And because we have a problem with multiple resistances in series, we use the simple rule of adding the th different resistances to a total resistance. And so next to what we had priorly in the before previous videos where we added the conductive resistances, now we add on the both sides of the problem the convective resistances. In general, we can summarize here that usually if we have um, such a multi-layer wall, we have one resistance for the, um, uh, for the convection on the one side, we have convective resistance on the other side, and we have multiple layers. So this is just the uh, addition from three to infinite number of layers. And this is also the equation present in the book of equations. Now we can utilize this equation and we can transfer this here to a heat transfer coefficient. So the heat transfer coefficient is a one over the total resistance. And now we have something similar as we have seen before um, for just the heat transfer coefficient um, alpha, which is only accounting for the temperature Ta at the um, wall temperature, so the heat transfer between um, this part here. We can also define a new heat transfer coefficient for the heat transferred from the inner side of the room to the outer side of the room. This here is again similar to an empirical co um, coefficient, but it comprises now two empirical coefficients, so the alpha values and in addition all the conductive resistances. They are all summarized in this one heat transfer coefficient k. Now let's go back to the example of the window. We had calculated this enormous heat loss through the window of 8000 watt per square meter. And now we will use um, a value for the heat transfer coefficient that is quite reasonable inside and outside the room. Of course, it depends if there is wind, uh, windy outside, the heat transfer coefficient can be higher, or if there is a lot of movement in the room, or depending on the furniture, the heat transfer coefficient can be lower. But this is a quite reasonable value for the heat transfer coefficient in a gas. Um, and as such, we would like to use this value now to calculate first the total resistance and the total resistance is now the resistance by convection inside the room, the convection outside the room, and the thermal resistance of the window itself. So this translates to 1 over alpha A plus delta glass divided by lambda glass plus 1 over alpha B. We see that this resistance here does not comprise of the area. We are interested in the area-specific heat flux, but Pay attention now here, the unit is different compared to the unit that we had before for the thermal resistance. Now we include the values, so the 1 over the alpha A will be 1 over 10 watt per square meter Kelvin, and on the other side it's also 1 over 10 uh, watt per square meter Kelvin. This we already had with 0.005 Kelvin per meter. And if we add those values, we come up to a total resistance of 0.205 Kelvin per watt. 
you can see that compared to the resistance that we had before, there's a huge difference. And as such, because there's a huge difference in the resistance, there's also a huge difference in the uh, heat that is transferred. We can see here that the heat that is transferred is only taking into account the 40 degrees Celsius of thermal potential, only 200 watt per square meter. So it's a factor of 40 difference between the heat that is transferred due to the limit of the glass only with the relatively high thermal conductivity of glass, what we see compared now to the heat is transferred if we count for that case. We can see this effect also if we are in the winter time and we look at the window inside and we see that it's foggy, that there is water on the window. So the room temperature is high, it can be 20 degrees Celsius, but the window temperature is relatively low such that there is a, condensating, a condensation of the um, moisture in the air taking place. So there is a severe part and a severe influence now of convection and of the convective heat transfer resistance. Now let me summarize my talk or give you a few comprehension questions. So what influence does the additional consideration of convection have on the total heat transfer? This is a really dangerous question because usually we assume that convection increases the heat transfer. So if we don't have convection, the heat transfer is low, it's only conduction. And as soon as convection sets in, as for instance in the Rayleigh-Bernal case in the video before, heat transfer is increased. Now, in our case here, we add an additional resistance by convection by changing the temperature from the wall to the temperature of the room. And in this case here, as it is a resistance, it reduces the heat that is transferred from the room to the outside. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next video.